Hey everybody, Scoutcraft here again. It's Wednesday. We just entered the month of March. March is an interesting month, as you know, and we have a, a few things going on this month. One of them is the clocks go ahead, which we all look forward to that, which means the days are getting longer, or it seems that way. Um, a few other things about March. You know, this is March. Sometimes we celebrate Easter in March. This year will be in April. Uh, look forward to that. I remember as a kid, Easter was a big holiday for us. My mother used to, you know, make the baskets and oh, that was always a nice time. And the family would get together and they would squeeze me into some kind of suit <laughs> from the Husky department over at uh, Bayside. I would go there and I'd have to go to the Husky department. And <laughs> I was basically wearing like midget suits because I was so big and... uh <laughs> I never liked getting dressed up back then. It was always, you always felt like you were constricted because the suits were always tight on me. You know, even though you bought them a couple weeks before, by the time I got into it, I was probably, I was growing so much, so fast all over that uh, I never liked that. I never liked that part of it. I was always happy when I could squeeze out of my suit and get into some comfortable clothes afterwards, after the family left. Good times. Um, you know what I miss? I miss, what you know, we have the steam engine shows coming up soon. Next month we get a couple. I'm looking forward to that because we've been missing our tool meets. And I miss talking to a lot of the, uh, the old timers that, that used to go there. And, and that's one of the things I enjoy most is, uh, that's a resource that a lot of you don't really take advantage of is, uh, is our elderly population, the people that have lived through all this and, that's where the real education comes from. And I'm, I miss talking to older people. I, I swear, it's, I'm at the point where I want to stop people on the street that are older than me and just shoot the breeze and see what they have, what information they have, because that's where you get it all. But we have a couple things to talk about today. Um, I, I found that torch that I was talking about last week, about that blowtorch. So let's get right to that, see what we got going okay, on. Okay, on a quick note, uh, talking about Monday's video, a lot of people enjoyed the... Uh, the cleanup of this uh, Stanley knife, but a lot of people like the full polish, and you know me, I love the full polish. The problem is these knives were made from a almost like a zinc alloy or uh, some kind of alloy, and uh, and they were very prone, very soft material. Although they seem strong, they were very soft material. So when you have soft materials and you put a full polish on, uh, you're you're fighting the world. But if you ha you have steel or or cast iron or something you put a, a full polish you know it's much more durable and they don't show the scratches so okay let's uh let's talk about what we're going to talk about today today what we have here see that that is a an original blowtorch now i got this a while ago and when i got it they had no idea what it was or how it operated or anything they just said it was an old they didn't even know it was, they thought it was some kind of lantern because they could see it had a wick but this is just the way I got it, and uh, but I knew right away it was a blowtorch. And what it's missing, there was a little tube down here, and it was a really cool tube because the old rubber tubes. This a lot of times they were red. A lot of times rubber a rubber years ago was red for some reason, but it had a, a rubber tube that would come out of here, and that's where you blew through. And there's a little pinhole up on this tube, and uh, you can see here this is called the Spartan. You can see here Spartan alcohol torch manufactured by the Carlton Company and they were out of Boston, Massachusetts and uh, and this is a patent applied for so this is an early one uh, interesting torch it looks like it's probably a brass with a nickel coating and you know what happens with nickel right why I nickel such a, a, a fragile you know kind of coating that just it dulls it I, I never like nickel um, only a couple places that really applied nickel right. And so now the problem with this torch we can have here is the cap doesn't come off. See, the cap is frozen on there. And that's why I don't think they knew what it was. Uh, but so we're going to have to try and get this cap off. I've never had one of these before. So I'm, I'm hoping it comes off from the bottom here. I don't, I think this is attached here. And, and also this, I don't know if we're supposed to press on like this with like a turn or if it was threaded on and the threads have been long since uh, worn out. So let's take it apart 
and uh, little by little we can see look at that chain I love this old type sash cord I love all types of chain but especially the vintage chain this used to be we had sash cord in our win in our windows years ago remember sash cord <laughs> some some of you younger young people are saying what is a sash cord windows the windows in my house anyway a lot of windows were counterbalanced with a, a sash weight, which was a cast iron weight and a chain that ran up around a pulley to the window and it would counterbalance the window. You could open and close a window with one finger. Nothing like the windows today. You know, the windows today, I know they're double insulated and stuff, but you know, you got to wrestle with them. Back then you could open it. If you had your windows done right, one finger open and close. It was beautiful. Just like power steering. Remember power steering back then? One finger you could drive. Today's power steering is not the same. The steering wheels aren't the same. The steering wheels feel horrible in your hand. The old steering wheels were, had such a beautiful feel in your hand. Okay, I'm a little, uh, I'm getting out of, uh, away from the subject here. Let's take it apart. Now, whenever you have a split ring that you have to take apart like here, um, a lot of times people will want to widen it open. You know, they'll try and pull it and widen it. But a lot of times you can, uh, if you just tr split the split ring, just twist one way up, one way down, you can, like this, you see what we did there? One way up, one way down, it's a lot easier to swage back together than to try and squeeze it that way. And then you can work it around here. We don't have to go too far to get it off of there. But there we go. We took the split ring out. This is the wick. Look at that wick, huh? This is like a three-quarter inch wick. Oh, that's a big one, huh? And, uh, and there we go. We'll take a look at what it looks like inside. Okay, there. to remove the wick, we're just going to pull it straight out here. Okay. And there we go. You can see that don't have much use, but you would cut this off as it charred up. You would cut a little bit off, and, and that's how you know when you needed to replace the wick. So here's what we want to do. We want to replace, we want to take this off of here. But uh, now there's two ways to do it. First of all, I'm going to apply a little 50-50 in here. And I see a little, see, see that little seam right there? It looks like I might be able to get something in here to pry that open, okay? So we're going to put a little 50-50 around here and a little bit of heat because heat will always create that expansion contraction and maybe this cap will pop right Okay, off. now what we did was we just hit it with the wire brush under here just a little bit on that lip because you see that crud or whatever? I think that's where it separates on there. Now it looks like there might be a little bit of solder. We don't want to go too hot here with the torch and melt that solder or whatever. So what better way to work on a blowtorch than with a, a blowtorch? Now you could use this either way. You could heat it up like this by having it over here, or we could do it this way here, remember? See that? Just giving it heat under, just like that, and just warming it up. Now I'm holding the top of the cap, and I could tell if it's gonna to get too hot, but that's what's nice about working with this. You know, you just gradual heat, and then we'll put a little 50-50 on there, let it soak in, and hopefully that'll widen this up enough that it pops off. Okay, this is where the heat and the 50-50 comes in handy. Now, I thought that seam might have been here. I thought maybe it would made, came across here that this knurling was part of the cap. But as I was playing with it and I was trying to pull and, and twist, all of a sudden this gave, and look at this. This is how the cap comes off. It twists off. Now, a lot of these old caps just pressed on with a friction fit, but this screwed in here. Now, uh, which is a good thing because I didn't... Uh, Everything's nice and clean here, but now I'm going to clean up the top threads. The cap looks good, but here's an issue we have. Um, how this fits in here, this was, I'm, I'm trying to look over here. I don't see th threads. You see over there, I, I see a seam, but it don't look like threads on there. It just looks like a seam. How these were a lot of times they were press fit. So in other words, you would just press it in and give it a kind of a squeeze and it would be solid and like almost like a wedge but unfortunately this one here it's a little bit worn it does hold but um i'm gonna see if i can get it to the point where it doesn't because this is you don't want this popping off you know that's the key so i could put this in the lathe and take off a few thousands of this upper ring here 
that it would fit in you know much more snugly a little taper on it so that when you push it on you really gotta that's why it's got that knurling on there so let's see we can do that okay before we uh do anything with this i wanted to just show you the you know we have that nickel remember the nickel that's uh that's coming off here you know you can see it's chipping off and stuff so here's where you have to decide you see the stain here you know what you're going to do how you're going to address this this uh container do you know because if you try and get it nickel here the best you'll get is kind of a, a finish like this if you try and bring it back it'll be you know you'll have unless you take all the nickel off and go with the brass you know which a lot of these did come in brass so that's another thing you have to think about uh and you know how long you want to spend on it so let's work on this first now, looking at this section of burner assembly, there's a good chance, and most likely it's screwed into that uh, base, and this whole part up here is that seized area, but there's no way I could get it off or re-thread it, so I'm going to have to make it into a taper. Now, we're, here's where layout fluid comes in handy. So we're trying to get this to fit in here with a kind of a press fit. So uh, we took a little bit off. There's a brass part up there on the shoulder. And what we do is we put some layout fluid, that red layout fluid on there. Now we're going to put it here like this. See, it's not, it's not yet seated. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it, give a little pressure on here. And that will show where, you see the markings? It'll show where we're hitting up to and where we have to take off. So that's what the layout fluid's on. We put it on here. Give it a little spin back and forth, you know, turn it and see where the markings are, how far. You see down here we're fine, but we have to go above that area. See over there, we have to go up. Okay, after trial and error here, we took that off. You see how we, now we have, let's say, considered like a press fit. You see, it's not coming out. It's solid in there. And you still have a, a small gap uh, in there in case, because you don't want it flush down there, because God forbid it gets stuck, you know, how are you going to get it off? So we got that small gap, and uh, this will wear in with time, you know, because brass will wear a little bit, but it's solid in there. You don't have to worry about leakage. Now we could work on finishing the torch and, de you know, and determining what kind of color we want on here. I, I think I want to take off the nickel and get it down to the brass. Okay, we uh, took off the nickel, made it into a brass torch, and uh, you could see everything came out nice. Put a little tube on there. Now we're just putting everything back together. We got this uh, cleaned up, reinserted the wick, have the cap, we'll put it all together, fill it up with alcohol, and give it a try. Okay, here we have our completed uh, denatured alcohol uh, Spartan. And you can see here how nice the letters are. I had to kill out some of the light so we could see the flame because it's so clean. But the uh, 100-year-old torch and let me show you how this works and how nice this is now we spin off the cap ever so easily there is the wick and uh we light the wick real quick it's very easy to uh to light you know you see here now we have our little flame going now normally this would have i'm just using uh, this the only tubing i really had was this clear tubing but it had a nice rubber flexible tubing so i'm going to blow in this end and watch what happens to the flame. Let me move this here. I think with the black in the background, you might get a better view. Watch what happens. So you're only limited Unlike that little squeezy bottle here, which you got to squeeze and stop. This was the original. Here was the adjustment. You would adjust this to, depending on how high your flame is. And then just blow when you see the little wick there. How great is that? Now where this would come handy, let's say we had a rusted bolt or something and we had to heat up the threads or something like that. It's a perfect thing to use it for, you know, especially with this tubular one.
have to say works better than I expected. Shocking. Now to extinguish it, you could put the cap on, that'll extinguish it, or you could give it a quick, it blows right out. You know, it's alcohol, that's what's so nice about it. Then you put the cap on and that will maintain so it don't evaporate the fuel that's in there. So there we go. This one was such a fun project, especially since it uh, it did work out. And this is such a, this blowtorch is just amazing. Huh? 100, year tech, 100 year old technology and it just works as, as great as it did the day it came out of the factory. Okay, that was a lot of fun. Um, to get the finish on that brass up, I actually used flits. Now, you might know Flitz because Flitz is a sponsor of 357 Magdad and his channel, which is nice to have one of our own sponsored by Flitz. And, and I know Jim from Hand Tool Restoration over in uh, the UK is a big fan of Flitz too. So it's, it's nice and it worked very well. Uh, I used that and a little bit of a Scotch-Brite to get that finish right up. Brass is always nice to clean up. So this was a fun project, a win-win. This works so much better than that dental torch, right? Uh, you just have to have a you get a little winded if you try and work too long, <laughs> but it was a great project and I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye bye.